الشام وعلى رأسها أبو سفيان بن حرب تريد مكة المكرمة استنفر أصحابه للخروج إلى هذه القافلة لا يريدون القتال إنما يريدون تعويض ما فقدوه من أموالهم وجاءت قريش زاحفة تريد القتال وكان عددهم ما بين التسعمائة إلى ألف مقاتل وكان عدد الصحابة ثلاثمائة ونيف من المقاتلين خرجوا لا يريدون القتال وجاء أولئك يريدون أن يطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم وابتدأ القتال ووقف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في العريش المكان الذي صنعه له أصحابه ليشرف على قيادة المعركة وراح يتضرع إلى الله وهو يبكي ويقول اللهم هذه قريش أتت بخيلائها تريد أن تطفئ نورك اللهم نصرك الذي وعدت لأوليائك اللهم إن تهلك هذه العصبة فإنك لن تعبد في الأرض بعدها أبدا وما زال رسول الله يدعو إلى أن خفق في العريش خفقة وقال أبشر يا أبا بكر هذا جبريل آخذ بعنان فرسه يقوده على النقع فكانت الملائكة تقاتل إلى جانب المؤمنين صفا بصف ويدا بيد وكان النصر إلى للمسلمين وخذل الله المشركين وأسر من المشركين سبعين مقاتلا With the Muslim victory, the face of the world changed. The Muslims won. This marked the beginning of the spread of Islam. Had the infidels won, it would have spelled the end of Islam. Up to that point, the words of the Prophet and the Quran had always deferred the promise of wealth. But as of that moment, Material gain here on earth was promised as a reward for embracing Islam. If we win, I get money, I can capture women, I can become rich, even if I was poor before. We can say that statehood and a military began to emerge after the Battle of Badr. From the moment all of this was authorized, more and more people began to convert to Islam. As a result, after only ten years in Yathrib, Muhammad was able to lay siege to Mecca with a force of 10,000 soldiers. نون والقلم وما يسطرون ما أنت بنعمتي بنعمتي ربك بمجنون بمجنون والله سطر البعض وإن a new factor, the spoils of war, then upset the deal. The eighth surah of the Quran, a long one about the consequences of the Battle of Badr, was revealed, regulating spoils like a veritable institution. First was the innovation concerning captives. Muhammad decreed an original rule that each prisoner would teach ten Muslims to write and then be released. With Badr, migrants loyal to the Prophet could finally raise their head. The bothersome, unproductive intruders were now fighters and property owners. The people of Medina, whom the Prophet named Ansar, those who came to him as reinforcement, confronted the Meccan devils, and the Ansar, neglected by history, won, no doubt thanks to God. <laughs> The Koresh tribe was weakened and began to vacillate. 
There was still one problem in Yathrib, the Jews. Jewish scholars may not have been fonts of knowledge, but they certainly knew the Bible much better than Muhammad did. This was probably one of the main reasons for their rupture. On the strength of their own revelation, the Jews were the living denial of Mohammed's prophecy. There they were, using their own sacred book to deny the mission of Mohammed to his face and in his very own city. This was a decisive factor that led Muhammad to break with the Jews. He felt insulted and would prove to be merciless in his treatment of them. It was necessary to get rid of this disruptive element in Yathrib, so that all that remained in the city would be this unified group who believed in Islam. On his arrival in Medina, the Prophet preached only against idol worship. He allowed the Jews to preserve their faith. He forged a pact with them. This pact, which was established in writing, was short-lived because the Meccans, who had been defeated at Badr, had secretly renewed contact with the Jews in Medina. Two years after Badr, they attacked Medina at Uhud, and during this battle they defeated the Prophet. Muhammad's break with the Jews happened gradually. After the victory at Badr, he confronted one of the tribes over a minor incident. In the end, they arrived at an agreement and the Jews left. Although this was a small victory for Muhammad, it did allow him to put one of the tribes out of commission. Misfortune is good for something. This is more or less how the early chronicles of Islam extolled the defeat at Uhud. While the triumph at Badr had strengthened the faithful, it lulled them into forgetting about forming a real army. Seeking revenge for Badr, the Meccans led several thousand men to Uhud.